The following is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports, a division of Jefferson Pilot Financial. It's been 39 years since the SEC teams in Tennessee have swept the Kentucky Wildcats, but tonight in Knoxville, that streak can end. Vanderbilt down the Cats at Rupp and did the same in Memorial. Tennessee won it rough behind hot shooting Chris Lofton, and a win tonight would make a volunteer state sweep. Kentucky is tied with Florida for second in the East. A win over the Vols vital for their chances for an SEC tournament bye and an NCAA berth. It's the Bluegrass and Rocky Top. Kentucky meets Tennessee. Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, Tennessee, sold out tonight with 25,000 fans here to see two old rivals meet on the hardwood as the Kentucky Wildcats meet the Volunteers of Tennessee, the SEC Eastern Division champions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Knoxville. Tom Hammond and Larry Conley here to bring you the game. Buenas Sara, that back from the uh, Olympics. Larry, glad to be here to start with a good one. And, in fact, uh, so much at stake, especially for Kentucky. Yeah, and the thing about it is coming into Knoxville is a very tough place for them to play because they've already lost one game to this Tennessee Volunteer squad. And I want to tell you, Tom, the one thing about Bruce Pearl, he has brought a level of enthusiasm and really promotion I haven't seen around here since the days of Ray Mears. And I'll tell you, the three-point shooting, the full-court pressure, it is every Thing that this Tennessee crowd really wants and he has made it fun again here in Thompson Bowling Arena and this crowd tonight is testament to that now what about our Pontiac keys to the game tonight well I think for Kentucky they got to continue their shooting they have been shooting very well since about mid-February that Midas touch is very important for them for the volunteers they've got to keep that pressure up their defense has been really I think the main thing and the main reason that they've been able to do what they've done in the SEC this year all right, from a sold-out Thompson Bowling Arena, it's the Cats and the Vols back with the starting lineups and the opening tip in just a moment. The Alltel SEC Game of the Week is being brought to you by Alltel. By Red Lobster by Purnell Sausage, by Pontiac, and by Bell South. Sellout crowd at Thompson Bowling Arena and a special promotion tonight in the Lore Arena. The fans have been given T-shirts, orange and white, to duplicate the checkerboard of the end zones at Neyland Stadium. And they even uh, had the team run out through a T as they do football season here in Knoxville. Somebody bought a lot of T-shirts tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at our starting lineups. Kentucky, this is the ninth starting lineup, ninth different lineup they've used this season. This particular one is three and one. Stockton, Moss, Perry, Orbzut, and Sparks, who seems to play well on the road. He's starting his 110th consecutive game. That's seventh in all of college basketball. Tennessee lineup, Lofton, who had 31 against the Cats, including seven threes, had rubber Arena. Patterson, Bradshaw, Wingate, and C.J. Watson playing his final home game. He's had a sparkling career here at Tennessee. And in fact, it is senior night. Stanley Asumnu, Eddie Debro, Andre Patterson, and C.J. Watson being honored in pregame ceremonies here. Tubby Smith in his ninth season at Kentucky has lost 10 games this season and under fire, as you might imagine. And Bruce Pearl, who's pulled a rabbit out of the hat in Knoxville this season, wearing that orange blazer in honor of Ray Mears, the legendary ball coach, will be honored along with John Ward here at halftime. Tony Green, Ted Valentine, Rick Crawford are the officials in Tennessee with the opening tap. Cats open up in a man-to-man -man defense, and once again, Sparks on Lofton. And got a piece of it. I don't think that was a pass. I'm not sure. The way it came across there, I thought maybe Wingate went up and got it. Maybe so. Wingate slammed it down, and Kentucky turns it over. Let's see if that was a shot or a pass by Lofton. Tom, it almost looked like a pass to me, the way he threw it up there. I mean, it was a little bit out in front of the rim. I thought that Wingate went up and got it. It was a great timing play, and Tennessee is off quickly. Kentucky may elect to use a gimmick defense against Lofton, a box and one. We'll watch it. That one rims out, and Sparks wades in to get it as Wingate missed. 10,800 T-shirts given out here tonight as... 
Stockton, or Robbie Moss. Robbie Moss gets the first basket for Kentucky. Robbie stopped before the game and wanted to say hi to Clara Brody, his grandmother, celebrating her 98th birthday today. 98 years young. That's good. And Robbie gets the first basket for the Wildcats. Traveling call. Tennessee turns it over. The first turnover. And just to go back to that opening sequence that Lofton pass or shot it was a pass no field goal attempt he is credited here comes that press of Tennessee's they have had so much success with this year Stockton brings it up checked by Watson now Sparks takes over at the point Lofton has him long Three by Moss, who thought he was fouled, came up short. Here's Watson for the ball. Watson, Wingate, Bradshaw for three. Sparks chases it down in the corner after Patterson had it for a moment. Orbs do battling him from the backside. The fans wanted a foul, but Sparks picked it up in the loose ball down in the corner. Moss open three, short again. Orbs who kept it alive. Moss back to Perry. Lofton's got Sparks. I think that's a pretty good matchup for Tennessee. Bad switch right there. Wingate has him on the switch. Orbzoot has a mismatch underneath. Patterson comes to help. And now Lofton goes to Perry. Shot clock at 10. Sparks got around Wingate. Dishes off to Stockton, who hits the three. The mismatch finally worked. He got inside and made the good pass to Stockton in the corner. Stockton's played very well the last two games. Has come from nowhere, has started five straight games now. Had nine points against Mississippi, eight against LSU. Wingate is fouled. Orbshoot with the first foul of the game. Let's go back and take a look at what Tom was talking about. Brandon Stockton in the corner after Sparks drives the baseline. Gets the ball to him right in front of that Tennessee bench. And as indicated, he has played very well his last two games. Jawan Smith is in for Tennessee. 6'2 sophomore from Decatur, Tennessee, replacing Bradshaw. And Randolph Morris makes his first appearance in the Kentucky lineup. Morris, the 6'10 sophomore from Atlanta. Set out the first 14 games of the season. Is back now, averaging 13 points, five rebounds a game. And Sparks continues to watch Lofton, who burned them so badly in Lexington. Patterson at long range. Now in the hands of Watson, their point guard. Watson uses the screen. Wingate rolls to the basket. Can't find him. Here's Patterson. Tried to get it to Wingate. Off his hands. They turn it over. Well, good rotation that time by Kentucky inside. Moss came from the other side to slap it away. Stockton for three. Kicks high. Perry battling Lofton. And Tennessee's Patterson saves it. Here comes Chris Lofton. Sparks picks him up. Good job by Sparks. Didn't matter. Lofton going to the floor. Hit it anyway. First basket for the Red Hawk, Chris Lofton, who's been tearing up the SEC. Sparks drives on Lofton. Fall away, tough shot, no good. Nice rebound by Patterson. I think he was trying to answer the great play that Lofton made on the other end. Deflected out of bounds by Moss. Tom, you know, you're right about Chris Lofton. He has been on fire in Southeastern Conference play, particularly the last six games. This is a guy that I think is unquestionably first team all conference. I mean, he has had a great year. Former Kentucky Mr. Basketball at Mason County High School. One of the best games any opponent has uh, had at Rupp Arena, those 31 points. Here's Joe Crawford into the Kentucky lineup, replacing Moss. Crawford, 6'4", sophomore from Detroit, averaging 10 points, four rebounds a game. Bradshaw is back for the balls. Lofton is fouled. Kentucky's showing good pressure on the wings and tough to get at the ball in there. It was a good back cut. 
Morris fouled him on the backdoor cut. 5-4 Kentucky. To the conference presented by Chevrolet and American Revolution as we look at the SEC field goal percentage leaders in SEC games only with Randolph Morris up there amongst the leaders and Chris Lofton at even 50% for Tennessee. Noah of Florida is the leader in SEC games at 65.1. Pretty easy to calculate Morris's percentage since that's the only games he's played in Southeastern Conference games. There's Randolph coming off a bench off the bench once again here tonight. Difference in the game so far is Kentucky has a three-point basket. As you see the numbers on Randolph Morris for the season. Kentucky's hit two of six, Tennessee two of four. Kentucky's one of four from three-point range, Tennessee 0 of one. Rebounds even at three. Okay, Morris has really played well, Tom, since he's come back too. I mean, in SEC play, you indicated he's number two in field goal percentage, averaging 13 points, five rebounds. He has played very well for this Kentucky squad. Had 20 points against Tennessee at Rupp Arena as Lofton sinks his 37th straight field goal. The record is 39 here at Tennessee. Free throw. 37th free throw in a row. What I say? Field goal. Oh, third. Well, sometimes it seems like he's made that many. <laughs> so 38 straight free throws in a row now by Lofton. You still got those skates on your mind? Yeah, probably. <laughs> might, might have a triple axle come out before the night's over. <laughs> Lofton has a chance to set the record tonight. Here's Morris and misses it, but he'll shoot two. Thomas, the one thing that I think Morris needs to work on for next year when he comes back is his upper body strength. If he can take that ball up right there and make that and get a three-point opportunity, he's much better off. He got a little bit of a bump that time, and a stronger, more physical guy would have made the basket and also had a chance for the three-point play. He's been shooting free throws very well recently, too. In fact, Bradshaw fouled him, Larry, and uh, Bradshaw giving away about 70 pounds. You would think he would be strong enough to just muscle it in. He does, as you mentioned, hit the free throw, and we'll have one more. It's one part of his game he really has improved in the last couple of weeks. Randolph Moore sinks two to put Kentucky back up by a point. Rajon Rondo, his first appearance after the timeout, 6-1 sophomore from Louisville. Rondo very good defensively and that's a good idea to put him on Watson who handles the ball most of the time for Tennessee. Lofton. Crawford had picked him up. Lofton takes him to the hoop and puts it through. Six points for Chris. Well he just finds a way to score against Kentucky doesn't he? Here's Sparks his first shot of three no good. Patterson his third rebound. Open three, good. Jawan Smith sinks the three, and Tennessee is up with its biggest lead. Here's Sparks trying to answer. Three's no good. Out of bounds, last touch by Patterson of Tennessee. One of the things about Chris Lofton, he's not just a three-point shooter. He can take that ball and put it on the floor and get it to the rim. As he has shown Kentucky here several times tonight. That's uh, one of the improvements that he's made in his game from his freshman to his sophomore season. Stanley Asumnu, 6'5", senior from Houston, into the game, averaging eight points a contest for Tennessee. Watson nearly had the steal. Rondo saved it from going into backcourt. Major Wingate also has come back for Tennessee. Bad pass. Picked off by Watson. Missed the layup. Follow shot and one for Asumu. Well, the checkerboards are standing right now. Good defensive work right here. A bad pass by Crawford resulted in a Watson attempt to the layup, and Asumu comes back, gets the offensive rebound, and gets hammered, and he'll get a chance for a three-point play. Good, strong move inside by Stanley Asumu. Crawford made the bad pass and then made the foul. By the way, the steal by C.J. Watson, the 193rd of his career. He's second on the all-time Tennessee list. Vincent Yarbrough, the leader with 211. 
I went out before the game tonight and I told CJ, I said, you know, through the years I have watched a lot of guys go through and I always tell the seniors I enjoyed watching them play and that has been really true for him for me in his four year career. He has been outstanding. Second ball player all time with a thousand points and 500 assists. Assume he misses the free throw. It's 13 7 Tennessee. Kentucky needs a basket to reestablish themselves here. 7 0 run by the Volunteers. Here's a foul as uh, Rondo made his move on Jawan Smith. That's a tough matchup for Smith. Rondo very quick. When he puts the ball on the floor, that first step he has, he can get by most people. Smith not known to keep up with players like that. Second foul on Tennessee. Moss got it into Morris. Jump stop by Randolph Morris. Missed the shot. Nice rebound by Asunu is in a hurry. Watson spotted for the three. Go! Quickly the other way, Moore swiped by Bradshaw, but he's called for a foul. That's two on Dane Bradshaw. Bruce Pearl disagrees with the call, but he likes this one. In the corner, C.J. Watson just outside the arc, nails it. Tennessee running the fast break the way Kentucky has in the past. So the second foul on Dane Bradshaw as Tennessee in the midst of that 10 0 run. Bradshaw goes to the Tennessee bench. Kentucky has missed its last five shots. There's Bradshaw. Two early fouls puts him out of the game. Temporarily at least. Lob it into Moss. Kentucky sets it up. Sparks with a screen from Sheree Thomas, who makes an appearance in the Wildcat lineup. Here's a mismatch again. Wingate picks up Sparks. Stockton, a floater, air ball. Off the hands of Patterson, though, it'll be Kentucky's ball under their own basket. Tom Morris had a good matchup on the inside that time with Andre Patterson. Kentucky really didn't work to get the ball to him. Stockton on the baseline tries to come in. It's an air ball. Shot clock did not reset. It's down to seven. Stopped a nice crossover dribble and a dish. And the foul call. It's offensive on Brandon Stockton of Kentucky, his first. I'm not really sure Wingate can withstand this powerful move by Stockton. As big as he is, Wingate got the good position, and Stockton committed the foul. Stockton had made a nice crossover dribble to get free and then collided with Wingate. Third turnover for the Wildcats. Kentucky's gone to his own defense, a 2-3 matchup. Jordan Howell is in for Tennessee as Wingate with a good move down underneath. Wingate has four. And Kentucky's gone uh, four and a half minutes without a field goal. Sparks missed. Morris fouled on the follow. Randolph Morris fighting the offensive glass. We'll shoot two. Get a little tough inside. A little hand-to-hand -hand combat going on in there. Andre Patterson commits his first. That time Morris did go up with a lot of strength. Morris hit his previous two free throw attempts. Well, Andre Patterson has done a terrific job of rebounding since he's become a starter for these volunteers. He has four already tonight. And we played just over seven minutes. Howell guarded by Moss. Now in the hands of Lofton. That's a foul. Lofton shot it from 
near Alcoa <laughs> and drew the foul from Sparks. I see if they ruled in the act of shooting or, or had he already come down. I th no, I think he tried to make the pass off right here, right at the last moment. So they uh, will not rule it in the act of shooting. No free throws. Kentucky has gone six minutes without a field goal. They've missed their last five, while Tennessee has hit five of their last six. Howell for three. Everybody's getting in the act. Jordan Howell, who only averages two a game, knocks down a three-pointer. And timeout, Kentucky. The Wildcats in danger of being blown out here at Thompson Bowling Arena. 18% shooting while Tennessee is scorching the nets at 70%. We'll return after this message from the University of Kentucky. Bruce Pearl and the Tennessee Volunteers putting it to Kentucky 21-7 as their swarming defense has held Kentucky without a field goal for over six minutes. Their last four points have been at the free throw line. <laughs> Major Wingate came out on the floor with a towel around his shoulder. <laughs> they asked him to throw it back. Well, the Major could play in combat boots at this point, and it wouldn't matter much. Tennessee has been that good. That time they get it underneath the Morris, who slams it home as they broke the pressure defense to get the good look. And Randolph has four points, breaks the long drought. Wingate drives on Moore. Sparks takes a charge. He thought no whistle, but it did result in a turnover. Moss leads the break. Thomas, that'll be a goal. That tend. may be goaltending. Goaltend on Wingate. Credit the basket to Sheree Thomas as Kentucky gets the fast break basket on the goaltend. Howell with three. Everybody's getting into the act, and Tennessee leads by 10. The 11.41 to go first half, and Tennessee leads Kentucky by 10. As we're joined by the longtime legendary voice of the balls, John Ward, who was the voice of Tennessee basketball from 1965 to 1999 in Tennessee football from uh, till 1999. In fact, he closed out his career as uh, Tennessee celebrated the championship of the 1998 football season. And uh, he was the voice of Tennessee football from 98 to 99. John, glad to have you with us. Thank you, Tom. I know you were partly responsible for having the checkerboard pattern in the lower arena tonight. The athletics department and the Vol Network and the Wall Network's longest continuing sponsor. I was even broadcasting in 1970 the natural gas industry of the state. Came up, somebody came, I, it is not my idea. Had it fallen flat on its face, it would have been my idea. <laughs> but uh, to make uh, 11,000 uh, roughly T-shirts, half and half, white and orange, and uh, to duplicate the orange and white checkerboards. You know, it's you, worked. Yes, it has. It's uh, pretty impressive. And you're going to be honored at halftime. You're going to have a banner in the rafters here at Thompson Bowling, along with Ray Mears, who was coach of the balls when, when you began broadcasting basketball. That's correct. And uh, Coach Mears is here. He's not in good health, but he's here, and he'll be at halftime. John, I must tell you, Bruce Pearl reminds me a great deal of the promotions exactly the way Ray Mears used to do it back in the 60s. Uh, no question about it. He is uh, has the ability to communicate with people and to develop loyalties from people starting with a student body, and they are similar in that regard. Randolph Morris was the putback for Kentucky. Here's Wingate, loose ball, scramble for it, and a held ball. I tell, you, I tell you the thing that's most impressive to, to me, too, is that Tom and I have been doing basketball games in here forever, and he has taken a basketball team last year that was in the doldrums and turned it around, basically the same people, and he has made a winner out of this group. You're correct. What more can I say? You're correct. <laughs> What's it going to mean to you, John, to have that uh, banner in the rafters, as much as the legendary and late Kaywood Ledford has at Rupp Arena in Kentucky? Kaywood Ledford was my closest friend in sports broadcasting. And he, for years, his broadcast brought dignity and distinction to Kentucky. Uh, it'll mean a lot to me because Coach Mears will be honored. That's the reason it means a lot to me. And I think I know Kaywood well enough to say if he were here, he would be saying the same things about you with dignity in class when you broadcast the Tennessee games for over 30 years as he did Kentucky games. Kentucky with an 8-0 run thanks to some Randolph Morris heroics getting back into the game as we pause for a message from the University of Tennessee. Randolph Morris has scored eight of Kentucky's last 10 points, six of them on dunks, six of those points, and Kentucky's back within six 
We're visiting with John Ward, the retired longtime voice of the balls, football and basketball. And John, when they built Thompson Bowling Arena, and for so many years with Tennessee basketball not doing that well, a lot of empty seats, it must be gratifying for everybody associated with Tennessee basketball to see this place filled up. No question, particularly for the fans. They are the ones who are enjoying this team and this uh, uh, resurgence in Tennessee basketball, and uh, they are very, very active here tonight, as you can tell. John, one of the things that talking to Bruce Pearl uh, the couple of times I've been in here this year is his level of promotion and his his work with the students. I mean, very few coaches I have seen at the collegiate level has spent as much time cultivating the students like he has. Not only does he spend time, a lot of coaches spend time. He creates involvement and reaction. To me, that's the main thing. Uh, why um, other people could say exactly the same thing come up with exactly the same ideas and not generate the loyalty which he has done. It is amazing to me uh, how quickly the students have become uh, very much a part of it. Uh, he's he's really I told Coach Mears here a minute ago, I'm still trying to find out something wrong with him. You know what I got to say? You know, he wears that orange blazer, he says, in honor of Coach Mears, who will be honored along with you at halftime. And there is Coach Mears. And uh, he really put basketball on the map in Tennessee, didn't he? No question. Uh, Coach Ray Mears was a, a creative person. He loved Kentucky. You, you may not know that, but he really was a fan of Coach Adolph Rupp. He loved Kentucky, but he loved to beat him more yeah, than that. I think so. <laughs> I can remember. So the game, Stu Aberdeen is assistant coach right. and uh, Coach Mears, and they used to put on quite a show. I can remember seeing them with the uh, the juggler on the unicycle and everything to sort of poke fun at the, that colossus that was Kentucky basketball and sort of get under Coach Rupp's skin, but I know that he did have respect for and him And sitting well. a moment ago, sitting next to Coach Mears was his first All-American, A.W. Davis. A.W. Davis was was uh, to the right of Coach Mears there in the shot we had a moment ago. And I spent a lot of time avoiding his elbows. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right, uh, John. You, uh, he would say the same thing about you, Larry. <laughs> I think we're having some clock problems yeah, right the, now. The uh, scoreboard problems. At one time, the scoreboard said 95-93, and I don't. It, the night hasn't been that long. I'm just back from Italy, John, so <laughs> I am a little jet lagged, but I don't think I've been here quite long enough to score 95 points yet. And we're proud of. I remember the first year you did the SEC games. You interviewed me at Stoke. You don't remember that, but I do. And we're proud of. Uh, what you've done. Well, that's very proud, and the conference is proud of you. That's kind of you to say, John. Uh, Kentucky and Tennessee, you know, I think have a mutual respect. And yeah, I can remember uh, Lindsey Nelson also being kind to me when I came to Knoxville, and uh, it means a lot to me. And as uh, Andre Patterson scores for the balls. So far, Tennessee is not being able to stymie Kentucky with that pressure defense. They've been able to get it up uh, in the last three or four minutes. Morris has been able to finish off on some pretty good passes. Tennessee this time got down inside. Good move and again a good pass to the left side. C.J. Watson. What a terrific player he has been in four years here at Tennessee. Ryan Childress commits the foul. Seven Tennessee players have scored now in the first half. Deflected out of bounds by Lofton. John, uh, Bob Kessling, of course, uh, our friend has replaced you as voice of the balls. Do you miss it? Yes. I missed the preparation. People may not. You, you would understand that. Right. The preparation is what was a lot of fun. Randolph Morris. He's been a big spark for Kentucky. He's in double figures. Watson lost it. Here's Sparks the other way. Rondo trying to get it back to Sparks. They turn it over. Smith as Kentucky gets back on defense. Watson started for the three. Good. Like I said, he has been a thorn in the side of Kentucky every year he's been here. That's a terrific shot. Good ball movement by Tennessee. Reflected out of bounds. Tennessee touched it last. We talk about C.J. Watson's ability to pass the basketball, but he's not just a passer. He's a shooter, too. This guy is shooting 43% from beyond that three-point arc. Just a good, well-rounded guard. He's two for two in tonight's game from that range. Here's Morris. He traveled. Fifth Kentucky turnover as we check some other scores. Florida having trouble at home against Georgia. Arkansas has been hot. They lead by three. Alabama and Auburn in a close one. Duke at one time trailed big. 
They've come with a big run to take the lead on the Seminoles in Tallahassee. 940 to go first half here. Driving layup good by Dane Bradshaw, his first basket of the game. You know, John, there are a lot of players on this Tennessee squad that have made advancements over the last year, but I think Dane Bradshaw has come further than anybody. No question about that. Tennessee's a step and a half quicker than any team that's been here. That's the way I, I mean, offense and defense both. Morris rebounds the miss by Rondo and scores his 12th point. 12 points, four boards. Bad looking shot by Smith on the scramble. Bradshaw puts it home. And just like that, he has found ways to score. I mean, he's one of those garbage players that always seems to come up with a ball or a deflection or a steal or a rebound. He's always doing something to make this Tennessee squad better. Thomas trying to lob it. Good catch by Morris. Draws the foul as he takes it up. Let's go back and take a look at the work of Dane Bradshaw once again. Nice move to the right side using the glass going inside and then picking up the loose ball with a lot of blue shirts down on the floor. Bradshaw finishes it off. Then Randolph Morris draws the foul. He scored 12 of the Wildcats last 14 points. Single handedly keeping them in the game. Tom, they're really going to him a lot right now. And the last not? last eight possessions, they've really tried to get the ball into his hands. Perry replaces Thomas. Morris with the second free throw, trying to cut it back to single digits. Morris is four of six at the free throw line. He has 13, now 14 points. He stays in that man-to-man -man defense. Wingate at long range. Morris doesn't come all the way out. Now Smith. Into the hands of Watson. A screen from Wingate. Morris jumped out and is called for the foul. I think that'll be a second if it is on Randolph Morris, and that would be costly. Randolph Morris has had a penchant for fouling. Uh, he, he's had a difficult time. He had a difficult time last year, and he's doing the same thing this year. And he did foul him. He just reached out and grabbed him. It might have been a little questionable, but he sits with his second foul, and if W. Smith is true to form, he'll sit the rest of the half with two, and he has been carrying the Kentucky offense. He was locked it out of the lineup. Kentucky can kind of reestablish themselves defensively, but there's the guy they got to stop. It's Bradshaw driving and missing and then rebounded and falling out of bounds and turning it over is Kalen Sims, the sixth Kentucky turnover. He just lost his balance apparently and fell out of bounds. Tubby Smith wanted a pushing foul on Wingate, but it looked like to me he just fell over. So Morris has 14 of Kentucky's 21 points. And he's on the bench with two fouls. Drive to the basket, good by Asunu. Top Tennessee's really taking it Kentucky inside. They're getting layups on them, and nobody's rotating over to stop them. Perry with a bad pass. Here's Wingate. As the late Al McGuire would say, a little French pastry back over the head by Wingate on the jam. Timeout, Kentucky. Tennessee shooting 70% here in the early going, getting to the rim repeatedly, and they've opened it back up at 34-21. Well, the pressure defense finally paid off. Take a look again. Here's Wingate down in there. Now watch him come up with this loose ball. Yeah, that's the way you want to do it. Checkerboards are standing again. <laughs> Say, Tubby Smith may not have the luxury of allowing Morris to sit over there. They don't want to get down too far right now. They're down 13 points at this juncture of the game. I'm not sure they can allow him to sit over there. He may have to come back in. Well, John, thank you so much for sitting Tom. in with us. It's been a pleasure. You've been you. uh, so nice to me over the years. I admired your work greatly. You're one of the greats in Southeastern Conference history. Thank you very much. And I will say ditto to that. Thank you, Larry. Thank you very much. John Ward. The legendary voice of the balls for so many years. Sims and one got the roll and will shoot a free throw. He was truly one of the greats.
We love Bob Kissling, but we miss hearing John Ward as well. <laughs> Timeout with seven and a half to go, first half. Thirty-four twenty-three, Tennessee leading with seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. All Tell presents the All Tell SEC trivia question. Name the volunteer players who won gold medals in Summer Olympic Games. Stay tuned. We'll have the answer for you in the second half. Do you know the answer to this? Uh, no, I have to think about it. I'm not sure I know. Well, meanwhile, Tennessee against one of the SEC's best defenses is shooting 70 percent. Remember Kentucky tied for fourth in SEC scoring defense and 70 percent by Tennessee that got into the rim time after time. They've also hit four of seven from three point range. Kentucky nine of 20 45 percent one of six from the three point arc and seven turnovers. Tennessee has nine assists on their 14 field goals. Sims completes the three point play makes it a 10 point game. Sims quickly jumps out on Smith, deflected by Sparks. But Wingate saves, and here's Watson. Rondo tried to steal it from behind. Battle for the rebound. Perry. Perry and Asunu after it. They say Asunu hit it live. Yeah, he did. He came up over the back that time of Perry and knocked it out of bounds to give it Kentucky back, or give Kentucky the ball back. Ravi Moss replacing Bobby Perry. Pretty small lineup in here with Sims being the biggest player on the floor now for Kentucky. Kentucky's had some success going small this season. As Sims dribbles up, or Rondo, excuse me, dribbles up against the Sunu. Crawford, jump stop, basket no good. Wingate clears once he picks it up. <laughs> First rebound for Major Wingate. Couldn't get the handle. Oh, no. Floater assumed there's no good. Wingate pounded Sims. No over the back call, but it is Kentucky's basketball. They say Wingate touched it last. Yeah, Sims had the good inside position that time, but Wingate is just flying at that rim. He's taking a running jump from about the uh, elbow on either side of the free throw line. Rondo, as they beat the pressure, spotted for the three. Crawford, good. Nicely done that time on both ends. Rondo with the pass, Crawford with the basket. His first of the game. When Tennessee beat Kentucky at Rupp Arena, both coaches agreed that in the second half, Kentucky sort of ran out of gas against the pressure defense of Tennessee. And we'll see if that is a factor in the second half in this game. Right now, with six minutes to go in the first half, Tennessee's been running at will against Kentucky as Watson misses a three, and Crawford has the board. Kentucky making a little bit of a comeback after being down just a moment ago by 11. In fact, Tom, they've been down twice in this first half and have battled back. Tennessee's biggest lead was 14 at 21-7. They want Sparks. There he is, fake the three, step behind the arc, shoots, no good, short. Knocked out of bounds, Tennessee's ball. Sims hit it last. Watch for the Geico College Basketball Campus Tour, season-long traveling exhibit, celebrating the greatest games of all time. Go to jpsports.com for more information and to find out when Geico will be visiting a college campus near you. Five forty to go. First half, Kentucky had the lead early in the half, and then Tennessee took command as Kentucky hit a six-minute-plus dry spell. Lofton is back in. He has six points on two of three shooting. Nearly taken away and then lost out of bounds. I think Sims off slapped Sims. the ball. Yeah, I'm not sure. Sims looked like he slapped it from behind. So off Sims, Tennessee's basketball under the basket as Tubby Smith calls for an explanation. And gets one from Ted Valentine. A Sunu. Tapped by Wingate. Boy, he's done a nice job on the offensive glass. He has eight points. Here's the trap. Moss throws it over the head of Stockton, but saved by Sims. Stockton then finds Moss to lay it in. Boy, Tennessee went to sleep that time on defense. Nice pass by Stockton. The recognition, the cut down the middle, the easy layup. 
Seven point lead. I think Tennessee thought that ball was going out of bounds and they kind of relaxed. Yeah, they did. Kentucky got an easy one out of it. Lofton hounded by Sparks. Tennessee spreading the floor right now. And they get it into the hands of Lofton. Patterson sets the screen. Lofton, a long three. No good. Good block out by Kentucky. Stockton has it. Here's Crawford. Takes it all the way. Collision, no basket. Oh, they've got a whistle on that. What did I say? Player control. Offensive foul. Joe Crawford. Tubby Smith can't believe it. That'll be Crawford's second foul. A little slow reaction that time, that time, Tom, on the part of the officials. Crawford goes inside. It's like he lowered his shoulder. I couldn't tell if Wingate had the position or not. Even Crawford was wondering what the call was going to be. Crawford stays on the floor with two fouls. Bad pass. Picked up by Sims. Gets it into the hands of Stockton. Both teams ragged here the last few possessions. Yeah, Tennessee's concentration has gone away for the last couple of minutes, and Kentucky's trying to take advantage of it right now. Off balance st shot taken by Stockton, and uh, Sunu was decked by a Sims screen. Legal screens, but Sunu didn't see it. You gotta let your teammate know when there's a screen coming. Boy, Sunu went straight down. Actually, Legal screen. I thought Tom, was it Thomas that made the, or it was Sims that set the screen. Although Sims might have been moving into it a little bit, I, it was hard to see. In any event, assume there's okay and Tennessee has the ball. Neither team able to score. We have four minutes left in the half. His last few possessions have been turnover after turnover. Except for the one Kentucky uh, fast break basket when Tennessee went to sleep. Patterson draws the double team from Sims. Finds the open man Howell for three. Moss to Sparks. Tennessee's back on defense. Here's the trailer Moss. Knocked away from him, and Tennessee has it. Assume new. Racing against Robbie Moss. Sparks to help. No good. Slammed home by Patterson. Well, that was a big time follow there. And they stole it. Lofton for three. Five points just like that. Here's Rondo. Deflected by Lofton into the hands of Sparks. Back to Rondo. Puts it up over how good. This is like watching a game in the backyard. If you've got a backyard that holds 25,000. <laughs> Wingate missed the slam. Here's Rondo. Numbers for Kentucky. He's got Sparks for three. And just like that, five in a row for the Wildcats. The first basket of the game for Patrick Sparks. Good comeback. Nice pass by Rondo to Sparks on the right wing. Back to seven. You think they're pausing to catch their breath? Probably. I need to. Lofton under pressure. Long three. Not a good shot. Short. Crawford has it. And here's a Tennessee foul in backcourt. Andre Patterson in backcourt commits his second foul. The floater by Asunu, the putback by Patterson, and then Patrick Sparks with his first basket of three. Southeastern Conference basketball brought to you in part by Alltel. From Thompson Bowling Arena, Kentucky and Tennessee matched up. The officials are having a look at the video of that last foul by Andre Patterson and I presume to see whether whether or not it was an intentional foul that is I believe what they're uh, looking for that's Rick Crawford that having a look at the video meanwhile that last three pointer by Lofton Chris Lofton was his 99th of the season which ties him with another Kentucky Mr. Basketball Allen Houston for the single season Tennessee record one more by Lofton will break the single season Tennessee record and will be his 100th. How about that though two Kentucky Mr. Basketballs won two in three point field goals at Tennessee. Here are the stats Larry uh, Tennessee at one time was hitting 70 percent they've cooled off they've hit only three of their last 12 now 53 percent. Kentucky 48 percent shooting and there's the three point field goals made Chris Lofton 
in 57 games now has made 192. And uh, Allen Houston holds the record at 346. Well, you and I have witnessed all four of those guys above him, and boy, they could shoot the basketball. They have decided after they looked at the uh, replay that that was just a regular foul, not intentional. Kentucky's hit three of nine from three point range. Tennessee, five of 12. Kentucky's committed 10 turnovers, six by Tennessee. Kentucky out rebounding the balls, 18 13. As Rakalen Sims toes the line, he's been bothered by back problems a lot this season, but he's been valuable off the bench for Kentucky here in the first half. That's his fourth point. And Tony, you talk about those rebounding figures. That's kind of a reversal of what happened in Lexington. I mean, Tennessee's not known as a good rebounding squad. In fact, uh, they're one of the worst in the conference. And up there, they did out rebound Kentucky. Sims knocks down two free throws. And suddenly, it's a five point game. It's Tennessee's turn to hit the dry spell now. Kentucky has done this, this comeback, without Randolph Morris. He scored 14 points. Well, Kalen Sims has played well off the bench tonight. Morris went to the bench with two fouls. Well, he, was the, he was the impetus for it, though. Got it going for them. Underneath Wingate came out. Moss, it was intercepted, and Smith puts it in. Rondo turned his back and started up the floor. Moss tried to lay it out there for him. Rondo to Moss. Ball fake. Blocked by Jawan Smith. Moss and Watson collide. Robbie Moss commits the foul. Kentucky has gotten 27 of its 36 points tonight off the bench. First foul on Moss. Update the scoreboard. Florida State within one of Duke. Maybe looking ahead to North Carolina this weekend. UConn leading Villanova in front of St. John's. A&M leads Texas. George Washington in front. And here the 11th ranked Volunteers leading Kentucky 43-36 with 1.36 to go in the half and C.J. Watson at the line. No good. Rebounded by Perry. Nice screen again by Sims. Is that going to be offensive? Illegal screen on Raquelin Sims. First foul on Sims, another Kentucky turnover, their 11th. Don't forget Saturday, starting at 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central Time, an SEC doubleheader for you. Tennessee visiting Vandy and Ole Miss at LSU. And that uh, will decide the regular season SEC championship. LSU can take it if they beat Ole Miss and if Tennessee wins tonight and Saturday they could have a chance to tie if LSU loses. Sparks got hung up on a screen and Smith had a wide open layup. 22 points off Kentucky turnovers by Tennessee. And then the final minute scoop shot is good by Rondo. It's one thing that Rajon, Rajon Rondo could do. He could put the ball on the floor and get it to the rim as quickly as anybody in college basketball. Watson got away from Rondo, picked up by Sims. Here's Watson for three. His first miss from that range, but an offensive board by Wingate. His fourth rebound, and now they can hold for the final shot. And that's exactly what they're going to do. One four. They flattened out underneath. Here comes Wingate. Bearing out for Watson. Back to Wingate. Doesn't take it from 17. Back to Watson. Driving. Collision. Foul is on. C.J. Watson of Tennessee. And a look at the top 25 teams in the nation presented by Q Motor Oil. Tennessee 11th in the AP poll and Florida 17th after losing three in a row. LSU 21st to three SEC teams in the top 25. Big break for Kentucky here to get that ball back with 5.7 seconds. Not a good play by Watson going down inside that time. And his second foul. Tennessee looks like they're still going to pick up. Give the ball to Rondo. One on one. 
He can take it all the way, take it, or find somebody open in the corner. The basket here would be huge for the Wildcats. Perry to pitch it in. Can't get it to Rondo. And calls a timeout. Good defensive work that time by Jawan Smith. With help from Asumnu. W. Smith looked disgusted as Kentucky calls a timeout to try to get it inbounds. We'll take a break now for a message from the SEC. SEC tournament is next week. You'll want to visit the Dr. Pepper Fanfare of the SEC tournament in Nashville where you could get a chance to shoot for a million dollars. If you can hit five three-point shots in 30 seconds, you may be selected as one of two finalists who will compete to shoot for a million from Dr. Pepper during semifinal Saturday on March 11th. Halftime here at Thompson Bowling Arena as uh, Ray Mears and John Ward are being honored here at halftime. Ray Mears, the uh, longtime coach of the Volunteers, who, as we said in our conversation with John Ward, put Tennessee basketball on the map, being wheeled out to center court. There he is during his coaching days at the old Stokely Athletic Center here in Knoxville, who in his very first season beat Kentucky twice. That got everybody's attention. You know, Tom, I was playing at Kentucky when he first started at Tennessee, and uh, he was really one of the great competitors and one of the real innovators, I thought, in the promotion of college basketball. He's been great fun to be around ever since uh, he left Tennessee and since I quit playing. We've become very good friends to sit down and visit and talk about basketball. So he laid the foundation for Tennessee basketball and what had been, uh, you know, mostly a football-oriented school and now strong in both sports under their new coach, Bruce Pearl. And uh, John Ward, with whom we talked in that first half, also being honored. And there will be a banner commemorating uh, John Ward and Ray Mears raised to the rafters here at Thompson Bowling, much as Kentucky has at Rupp Arena in Lexington. There's Mike Hamilton, the athletic director at the University of Tennessee. And basketball tradition with great moments, great games, great players, and great coaches. Tonight, we honor two legends by permanently recognizing John Ward and Coach Ray Mears. Their names, their names will be forever honored on Legends Banners in Thompson Bowling Arena. Now join me for that recognition by directing your attention to the rafters on the west end of the arena. Ray Mears and John Ward honored here at halftime at Thompson Bowling Arena as the SEC East Division winners leave Kentucky. Jefferson Pilot Sports and Alabama Tourism are teaming up for our biggest giveaway ever in the Boatload of Prizes contest. Log on to jpsports.com and register to win a brand new boat filled with prizes, including beach and golf vacation packages from Alabama Tourism. One lucky fan will win a prize package valued at over $60,000. Visit jpsports.com for official rules and regulations. Halftime in Knoxville. Let's take a look at the advanced auto parts drive to the SEC championship standings. Tennessee has already wrapped up the SEC East. Florida and Kentucky come in tonight tied for second place. And, of course, they meet at Rupp Arena on Sunday. In the West? In the Western Division, obviously, LSU already the SEC champion, at least sharing it. They could win it outright on Saturday in Alabama and Arkansas, both playing extremely well in the latter stages of the season here. Take a look at our Crystal halftime scoreboard now. With Florida leading Georgia by four, struggling a bit in Gainesville, Arkansas up on Mississippi State. 
Auburn and Alabama, you expect it to be close. And Auburn, surprisingly, though, halftime lead in Tuscaloosa. Vanderbilt in Ole Miss at halftime as well. And the Commodores up. 117 left in Tallahassee. And a tie game, Duke and Florida State. A one-point game, Clemson leading Virginia Tech. George Washington leading St. Bonaventure and Villanova up on St. John's. Connecticut and South Florida. Connecticut, UConn leading there. And Texas at one time trailed, but at halftime a one-point lead at A&M. Ohio State leads at Northwestern. They are trying to wrap up the Big Ten. And Iowa 30 to 17 at halftime over Penn State. Here it's 45-38, Tennessee leading Kentucky. Follow SEC basketball by logging on to jpsports.com and check out the Toyota Info Center. The Toyota Info Center, jpsports.com, your online destination for JP Sports coverage of SEC hoops. One tie forward lead changes in that first half. Kentucky led by as many as three. Tennessee had the biggest lead at 14 in that first half. Tennessee forcing Kentucky into a dozen turnovers and turning them into points. Yeah, Tom, I thought we had some excellent play in the first half. It looked like it was a little ragged at some points, but uh, enough highlights to show you. Okay, let's move on. on. Kentucky first, Randolph Morris, who was the opposite star in the first half, 14 points, dunking one right there. Nice move on the inside again. Morris following up with another dunk and an offensive rebound. But Kalen Sims got into the act. A nice pass by uh, Rondo to get it to him inside. He had five off of the bench. For Tennessee, what's Chris Lofton right here? Well, that's a nice move off the glass. Not just a three-point shooter. Not just a pretty face. Here's the nice pass again. Good line drive pass to Wingate. That was the first one of the evening. And then Wingate picks one up off of the floor. He had nine in that first half, or eight in that first half. And let's take a look at our halftime stats presented by Sonic Drive-Ins. Kentucky improved a bit to 48% shooting. Tennessee cooled off at one time 70%, down to 53% at halftime. You see the three-point shooting and the free throws. Kentucky with more free throws and shooting them well. But those 12 turnovers turned into 22 Tennessee points. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment. SEC basketball is being brought to you by Advance Auto Parts, by Sonic Drive-Ins, by Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership, and by your local Toyota dealers. Ready for the second half, Thompson Bowling Arena sold out. The orange and white very much in evidence here tonight. As the Volunteers, the SEC Eastern Division champions, leading Tubby Smith and the Kentucky Wildcats, who desperately need to win this game. It's a big week for Kentucky. I mean, this game tonight and then the game against Florida on Sunday. Tennessee's ball to open the second half. They lead 45-38. They come with Watson, Patterson, Wingate, Lofton, and Bradshaw, their original starting lineup. Patterson underneath, blocked. Good help defense by Morris, who blocked it, taken by Perry. Well, it's a good thing to have, they have him back in there. He only played nine minutes in that first half, Tom. I'm talking about Randolph Morris. With two fouls. He picked it up with eight minutes left, and here's Bobby Perry with a three to open it for Kentucky. What a great start for Kentucky to have Perry wide open down on that baseline. Tennessee just ignored him. Rondo Perry, Morris, Sparks, and Moss, and an interception by Morris. That's the Kentucky starting five for the second half. Here's Moss spotted for a three. It's up, and it's good. Back-to-back -back threes. Defensive plays by Morris. Finish on the other end. What a start. So Kentucky opens with back-to-back -back threes by Perry and Moss to pull within a point. Timeout, Tennessee. In the first half, this was our Alltel SEC trivia question. The volunteer players who won gold medals in the Summer Olympics. And the answer? Grunfeld and Houston. Ernie Grunfeld on the 76 basketball team. And Allen Houston in 2000. 76. Grunfeld was on a team made up of amateurs, and Allen Houston on the team when the NBA players went to the Olympics. Here are the back-to-back -back threes to open the half for Kentucky. Bobby Perry got one in the corner, and then right after that, Robbie Moss got one. 
And both of those came uh, at the end of two good defensive plays by Randolph Morris, which enabled Kentucky to get off to a quick start here in the second half. By the way, I would have missed on Houston. I think I had Grunfeld, but I would have missed on Houston. Of course, those are volunteer basketball players. Watson missed it, partially blocked on the floor. Watson lost it again, and Sparks picks it up, whips it to Rondo. Tennessee gets back on defense. Bradshaw stopped the ball in the form of Rondo. There's the graphic. But you see what's happened as uh, Kentucky turns it over. That's their 13th turnover as Perry couldn't handle the pass. I was about to say, uh, Larry, that uh, the gra it said the volunteer players that won gold medals at the Summer Olympics. They've had a lot of track athletes. Oh, yes. That a number of medals as well. In fact, that was what I was running across yeah. my mind. I thought, well, who are the good track and field? Yeah. Uh, there have been lots of them. Oh, there have been a ton of them come from out of Tennessee. Wingate with a screen for Watson, picked up by Morris. Got a mismatch. Bradshaw for three over Rondo. Kicks high, and Morris pulls it down. He's having some game. That's his fifth rebound. And Moss, another bad pass. Moss's pass zips over the head of Perry. 14 turnovers and still within a point. You top both of those passes right there. If Perry can gather those and bring him in, he's got two baskets. He was wide open. And the pass just zips right over his head. And Tennessee throws it away. Actually, I think it's 14 turnovers for Kentucky. The graphic said 13. So Tennessee returns the favor. And tonight is another chance to take a lead. Tonight's game has had its ragged spots here and there. Rondo, Watson all over him, deflected for a moment. Here's Morris. He's been the go-to man. Against Wingate. Fouled him. Nice move. He made the initial move into the lane and then turned and went baseline with the drop step. Tonight's Kentucky game brought to you in part by the Kentucky Farm Bureau. Morris having an outstanding game, not just his shooting, Tom, but he's, he's done a good job defensively passing the basketball. He's hit five of six from the floor as his free throw rims out. He's four of seven at the line. Have one more, and he could tie it as Patterson goes out for Tennessee, replaced by Jawan Smith. Morris looks to tie the game. Got it. 45 all. First, but pretty a confidence builder for Kentucky to be able to step out of that locker room and put on seven points to tie this game to start the second half. And they've held Tennessee without a score for three and a half minutes now. Sparks has a defensive assignment again on Lofton. Morris picks up Watson on the switch. Bradshaw twisting, turning, kicking it back out. Smith, an open three. It's good. Juwan Smith, Tennessee's top scorer with 10 points, and Bobby Perry pounded again. Smith cutting off the inbound pass to Rondo, and he has to spend another timeout. And no, he turned it over. Turned it over. They didn't get it in in five seconds. Kentucky turned over Tennessee's ball. He didn't get the timeout call. Well, that was a good defensive play by Tennessee that time. Look at Bradshaw come inside, kick it back out. Jawan Smith with a long-range three. Tennessee puts it in play. Their lead is three. They have the ball after another Kentucky turnover, 15. Three minutes into the second half. Bradshaw, screen of Rondo, an illegal screen. That'll turn it over to Kentucky, and it's three on Dane Bradshaw. Same play was made by Kentucky in the first half, and Raquelin Sims got the same call. Second foul of the half on Tennessee, number three on Bradshaw, who throws his gum in disgust at the photographers under the basket. I'm sure they're pleased about that. <laughs> Here's Andre Patterson returning as Bradshaw goes to the bench. Bradshaw's not had one of his typical nights. He has had an awfully good year, but not tonight. Four points as Stockton has come back in for Kentucky, replacing Rondo. Sparks has five assists tonight, even though he hasn't scored a lot. 
Joe Crawford is also in for the Wildcats. To recycle the half court offense. Crawford for three. Joe Crawford knocks down the three pointer. Crawford has two three pointers. He's tied it at 48. Lofton got away from Sparks. Dish to Wingate and one. Tom Tennessee is very adept at running these baseline screens. And when they free somebody, that time they got loft and open. Watch him make the move down inside. You've got to come and get him. And when you do, you find an open man. And Wingate was open on that baseline. And Crawford with a reach-in foul. Not a good foul to reach in. He had no shot of stopping Wingate. Commits his third. Here's some scores. And look at the upset in Tallahassee tonight. Florida State, which needed that win for an NCAA tournament bid. Florida victorious. UConn leads South Florida. George Washington beats St. Bonaventure. And Duke, no doubt, looking ahead to North Carolina this weekend. Morris made a nice fake. Wingate fouled him to prevent the layup. Good Second. foul by Wingate. Good move by Morris. Second foul on Wingate. Tennessee now has committed three in the half. Tom, you got to compliment Kentucky. I mean, they really have looked for Randolph Morris tonight after that initial seven or eight minutes. They started trying to get the ball down inside to him, and they have been very successful. And he's responded. Having one of his best games, he has 15, shooting here for 16 points. Free throw shooting has been a problem for Kentucky. They come in shooting 64.9%, ninth in the conference. They seem to come at crucial times for the Wildcats, though. Morris is now 5 of 9. Announcers for this game selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports and a use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Second free throw good makes it a one point game. 24,108 at Thompson Bowling tonight seeing a good one. Here's Wingate on the low post, guarded by Morris. Faced on him, Morris got a hand on it for a moment. Now trying to back him down, muscling up and under, and no good. Morris gets down the rebound, seven boards for him. Well, Wingate did a nice job backing him down that time. They could not finish the shot. Kentucky looks for the lead. Rondo's back in. Moss gives it back to Rondo, sets it up again. He's playing the point, sparks the off guard now. Stockton for three. It's good, and Kentucky has the lead. Their last lead was at 7-6 with 15.30 to go in the first half. How about Brandon Stockton? Layup missed. Wingate misses a tap. Here's Sparks. Numbers for the Cats. Rondo. Moss for three. Short. But a Tennessee foul. Was it on a three-point shot? It's on Wingate, and it's his third. <laughs> Tremendous comeback for the Wildcats. They lead by two. Five minutes into the second half. While we were away, Ted Valentine, the official, was looking at the replay to see if, in fact, Moss was fouled in the act of shooting a three. Tom, watch him step back beyond the arc right there. Now watch Wingate. See that little push on the hip? That's what got him the three free throws. And Robbie Moss will have a chance to go up there and make three free throws on what was, frankly, not a very intelligent foul. No, just a little touch yeah. foul. Moss uh, made sure the official noticed it, but it was not an intelligent play. Meanwhile, Kentucky is four for four this half, all from three-point range. They've outscored Tennessee 12 to five. Tennessee shooting only two of seven in the second half. And Kentucky has 14 assists on 18 field goals tonight. Sparks has five and Rondo has six. So Kentucky's found the range after that slow start. And now Robbie Moss with three at the line. And short, way short on that first one. Moss, 68% on the season. I know this is very frustrating for Tubby uh, Smith to, to sit here and watch these missed free throws because have they been able to make their free throws at a 72, 73 percent clip? There's no telling what kind of damage they could have done this year. But their free throw shooting has been, shall I say, woeful. You know, 64.9 percent. It's an epidemic in college basketball. You see what they're doing tonight. 
And Moss does sink. Two out of three. Kentucky's biggest lead, 54-50. Kentucky in a man-to-man -man defense. Stockton with a hand check foul. As Smith made a move for the basket. That's two on Brandon Stockton. For Kentucky, that's team foul number two. Bradshaw playing with three fouls, pitches it in. And Watson says, let me have it. Um, set it up, then gives it up to Smith. A pretty small lineup out there for Tennessee right now as they work those baseline screens again. Took Wingate out. And uh, Andre Patterson is the biggest man on the floor for the balls. Asunu, jump hook, no good. Short, easy board for Rondo. Rondo in a hurry, but Tennessee hustles back. Morris calling for it. He's being fronted by Patterson. They had, oh, they had him there, and Stockton couldn't get it to him. They had Patterson on his hip with an easy path to the basket, but they couldn't get him the ball. Now he's set a screen. Back in the hands of Sparks, under 10 on the shot clock. Morris with a screen, four to shoot. Sparks. Lobs it underneath, not a good pass. Rondo couldn't handle it. Shot clock goes off as Patterson takes it. Moss almost intercepted. Now numbers for the balls. Asunu threw a bad pass, but Watson gets it for three. No good. There's Morris starting the rebound. Oh, that was a terrific rebound. That's where you wade in amongst the trees and grab one. Boy, Randolph Morris came from a long way to get that one. Only two of nine shooting for the balls in the second half, and Randolph Morris having one of his best games. He has eight rebounds as Kentucky turns it over with a 10-second violation. When's the last time you saw that? Well, I have. Look at this. I mean, they just took their time. Sparks, look at this. Morris has got it. Then he holds it for a while, hands it to Sparks, and he just walked it up, and they turned it over. 17 Kentucky turnovers. Underneath Asunu. Six points for Asunu as Moss comes to pick it up and throw it into Rondo under the full court pressure. Seven minutes into the half, Stockton takes the lead pass, gets it to Morris, who lays it in. They beat the pressure for an easy one. Several ways to beat the pressure. You can throw over if that's what Kentucky did that time, and Stockton made a good pass to Morris. Defense flies by, lost to the three, good. And that's 100 for the season, the Tennessee record as he passes Allen Houston. He is so deadly with that shot. Sparks tries to answer and does from the corner. Got to shoot out Rocky Top. Rondo deflects out of bounds. Pretty good shoot in the last couple of minutes. And two former Kentucky high school stars, Chris Lofton and Patrick Sparks, as Lofton sets the Tennessee record, passing another. Former Kentucky Mr. Basketball, Allen Houston. Sims calls down that rebound as Morris gets a rest, and he deserves one. Andre Patterson had a great look at the basket right in front of that out-of-bounds play, and he couldn't make it. Kentucky flattens out with their offense now, 1-4. Rondo's going to handle it. Randolph Morris gets a rest. He has 18 points and eight rebounds. And a couple of good defensive plays to start this second half. We're eight minutes into the second half. Clear out for Rondo. Shot clock at seven. Fake by Stockton. Back to Rondo. Penetrates. Jump stop. Puts it up. And in. Rajon Rondo with a clever move. His sixth point. He does that so well. Gets it on the floor. Gets it to the rim. Six points. Seven assists for Rajon. Bradshaw faked the three. Got it instead. Howell who knocks it down from three-point range. He has two threes. Good pass by Dane Bradshaw to get it to Howell on that wing. The shootout continues, and neither team has blinked. Toe-to-toe, -to -toe, nose to nose. Penetration, Rondo faked the pass. Reverse good. Great move inside by Rondo. Bradshaw up and under. No, can't get rid of it. Does pass it inside, but it... Is off the Sunu into the hands of Robbie Moss. Here's Sparks in a hurry. Fifth Kentucky steal. A 
11 minutes to go in a fast paced high octane game in Knoxville. Welcome back Tom. <laughs> Did they know about jet lag. <laughs> Sims calling for it. Bradshaw fronting him, preventing the inbounds pass. Five to shoot. Stockton for three. No good. Rebounded by Patterson. Here's Powell pushing it up court. Lost and under pressure with Sparks all over him. He hit it. What a shot by Lofton. I think Sparks could have done any more defensively. I think he's at his best when the defense is all over him. Two-point game. He's three of six from three-point range. Rondo all the way lays it in as they beat the pressure with the quickness of Rajon Rondo. He has ten. I'll tell you what, he had Bradshaw in the middle man's land. He didn't know which way to go. Cover Sparks or cover Rondo. you got to stop the ball. Had he done that, Sparks was wide open. This end-to-end -end action really has negated the half-court game that was so productive for Kentucky with Morris. He's on the bench getting a rest. And the smaller lineup going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the quicker balls. And here is a 30-second timeout. Bruce Pearl stamping his foot in disgust at something he saw and lecturing his team severely as they call his ready on Lofton. Rondo has scored the last six points for Kentucky. Tom, I have said this consistently, that Rajon Rondo is as good as anybody in college basketball, putting the ball on the floor and getting it to the rim. That's a terrific move with the left hand right there off the glass. Look at this move right here with that fake and the reverse layup off of the glass. And look at the last one here. I mean, he's in control. He's got Bradshaw hung up. Bradshaw wants to go back and guard Sparks, and Rondo just goes in and lays it in. Three good moves to the basket. Clear out and let him take it to the rim, especially with Morris on the bench. Well, regular season comes to a close this weekend. 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central Time. These Vols will travel to Vanderbilt. And in the second half of the nightcap, Ole Miss in Baton Rouge to take on LSU. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Our all-tell SEC games on Jefferson Pilot Sports. LSU with more than a passing interest in this game. A back cut wide open. Bruce Pearl's lecture worked as Jawan Smith got the layup. He has a dozen points. Here comes Rondo again. This time they work it to Sparks and Tennessee recovers and a foul on Lofton. Baskets coming end to end. The latest one, the back door cut by Jawan Smith. Two point game. Best of the conference presented by Chevrolet. Three-point field goal shooting in uh, SEC games only. Chris Lofton, an even 50%, and Patrick Sparks, 43%. Just a few minutes ago, they traded buckets from three-point range here in this game. In fact, for the game, Tennessee's at 9 of 19, and Kentucky 8 of 15 from three-point range. Can't ask much more of your team than that. That's excellent three-point shooting. Tennessee in this half has hit four of six from three-point range, only three of nine from two-point range. And for this second half, Kentucky has hit nine of ten. Ninety percent shooting will bring you back in a hurry. They, at one time in the first half, trailed by 14. They currently hold a two-point lead with the ball. They clear out again. Now, no Morris is back. He's going to set a screen for Rondo. Fake the pass again, laid it up, and it rolls through. Rondo so for the cool. second time used that fake pass. He flops there and got the no call. Rondo has scored Kentucky's last eight. Here's Smith. He's had the hot hand. Jawan Smith, a team high 15 points, and Tennessee within one. Crawford looked to Morris, but he couldn't get free from Wingate. Here's Rondo, guarded by Smith. Gets a screen from Morris again, fakes the pass, hits the shot. He scored Kentucky's last 10 points. Tom, you would think Tennessee's defense would make some adjustments on this. Somebody's got to come and help. He's beating whoever is guarding him right down the lane. No one coming over and giving any assistance. Nobody off the ball comes to help, so they got to do something. Well, they keep hitting the threes, though. That's Watson, and he's tied it at 69. 
You might say Kentucky needs to guard the three-point shooters. They're the best in the conference this season on guarding the three-point line. Tennessee shredded them for 11 of 21. And Tennessee is the best three-point shooting team in the conference, along with Florida. Fourth tie of the game, and there's a push underneath called on Tennessee. That'll be the sixth foul of the half against the Volunteers. It's on Watson. It's his third foul. 7.53 left in frantic action. Smith hits the three after the good ball fake, but they can't stop Rondo. He scored Kentucky's last 10 points, tied at 69. Best of the conference presented by Chevrolet. Assist to turnover in SEC games only. And we see four of the top five on the court tonight. Bradshaw and Watson of Tennessee. Rondo and Sparks of Kentucky. And the Cats continue to light it up here in the second half thanks to Rondo, who's hit five shots in five attempts in this second half. Kentucky's hit 11 of 12. Assist to turnovers. 17 assists, 17 turnovers, Kentucky. And the numbers went by so fast I didn't see the Tennessee. 19 to 11. Thank you. What about 11 of 12 shooting for Kentucky in the second half? Oh. I'll tell you what, when you get layups like Rondo's getting, you're going to get those kind of numbers. Tennessee has not defended him well, but then Kentucky has not defended the three-point shooting on the other end. Here's Joe Crawford of Kentucky at the free throw line after Watson committed his third foul. Robbie Moss replacing Sims. Crawford has seven points with another free throw coming. Kentucky by a deuce. They've shot 18 free throws, only five for Tennessee. Perhaps a result of Tennessee shooting all those three-point shots. Tennessee again doing those baseline screens so they can free somebody to go down that middle. Watson lost it for a moment. Seven to shoot. And a Kentucky foul bails out Tennessee on a rough possession. Yeah, Watson actually lost possession of the basketball and was about to lose it out of bounds. And who was that? Was that uh, Robbie Moss? Robbie Moss committed the foul. Number two. Kentucky has committed three fouls only this half. Wingate, nowhere to go. Cut off, feeds it inside. Pitch back out to Watson. Watson traveled, didn't he? Yes. He was like a fullback. He tucked it under his arm and set sail for the goal line. Stopped short. <laughs> Twelfth turnover by Tennessee. SEC basketball brought to you by Alltel. Tom Hammond, Larry Conley, Thompson Bowling Arena. It's been really an entertaining game. Fast-paced, hard-fought. Just over seven minutes left. Kentucky with the ball up two. They once trailed by 14. It's the type of game we expect to see between these two teams. The great border war in college basketball in the SEC. Lob underneath. Rondo to Morris for the layup. Tom, how about the assist and the scoring by Rajon Rondo tonight? His second half has been terrific. That's his eighth assist of the game. He has 14 points. Points in the paint in favor of the Cats. High pick and roll by Wingate. Watson had to give it up. Here's Lofton. Six and a half to play. Long three by Bradshaw, short, but the long rebound into the arms of Jawan Smith. Watson penetrates, blocked by Morris. That's his second block. Follow SEC basketball by logging on to jpsports.com. Look for the Toyota Info Center. Toyota Info Center, jpsports.com, the way to follow SEC basketball. Hey, Watson was lucky to get that ball from Bradshaw. He ran out of room on that baseline. Tennessee's gone over two minutes without a point. But they only trail by four. Jump hook, Bradshaw. I don't know about that shot. 
And there's a foul on Randolph Morris. That's his third. Tried to keep the rebound alive. He says to Tubby Smith, I'll be all right, even if that is three. He remember picked up two with eight minutes to go in the first half. So he went a while before picking up his third with six minutes left in the game. Florida wins. They'll come to Rupp Arena to face Kentucky on Sunday, hoping to get the second seed in the East. Watson pull up. Bounces in, C.J. Watson. He made a good enough move that it fooled Rondo, and he lost his balance and fell down, and that's the reason Watson was so wide open. 11 points, five assists for C.J. Watson. Crawford inbounds to Sparks, who quickly tosses it back, and now into the hands of Rondo. Well, that Tennessee full court press is tough. They make it hard on you to get the ball in. Five and a half on the clock. Morris with a screen, looking for the ball. Here's Crawford with a three. I'm not sure that's the shot they wanted up over the backboard. And out of bounds to Tennessee. Crawford and Tubby Smith says, what's he doing shooting that shot? Rondo's been unstoppable. Morris has been unstoppable. And Crawford an ill-advised three. Yeah, Rondo tried to get down inside. He had nowhere to go, so he threw it out to Crawford. And he let one go. I'm not sure Tubby Smith was pleased with that. Here's Lofton, a long three. No good, long rebound. Bradshaw chases it down for the balls. The long three-pointer often results in a long rebound, and Tennessee got it. Watson, a mismatch, drives on Morris, who hacks him. That's number four on Randolph Morris. He's going to have to get him out of there now, Tom. And Sims comes to the scorer's table to replace him. Well, the switch was really a, a bad one for Kentucky. It's a good move right here. You see Morris commit the foul. There's no question about it as Watson tries to get up there. Morris will go to the bench with four fouls, having scored 20 points and pulled down eight rebounds. He's hit seven of his eight shots. First, Watson at the free throw line. I'll tell you how important it is. They pulled Morris off at the free throw line. They don't want him to commit his fifth foul down there on a missed free throw. Watson missed his only free throw. He's fourth best in the conference at the line and sinks that one. So now Stockton and Sims. Sims replacing Morris. And for Tennessee, Smith replacing Bradshaw. No, I'm sorry, Wingate replacing Bradshaw. That's the lineup this weekend. Final games of the regular season this weekend, including Florida and Kentucky on Sunday. Arkansas Sunday. Arkansas, Georgia on Sunday. Also, that'll be on JP Sports. Watson has scored Tennessee's last seven to tie it at 73. Sims wants it down inside against Wingate. Crawford trying to go one on one. And they're giving Rondo a rest for the stretch run. Ten to shoot. Crawford left open, three-pointer, good. That makes up for that last one as he knocks down the three. Came off of the screen. You come on that curl, you get wide open and squared up. Crawford is good when he can do that. That broke a two-minute Kentucky dry spell. Fumbled by Patterson momentarily. Tennessee spreading the floor again. High post pick and roll. Four minute mark. Watson. He scored the last nine for the Volunteers. He has 14 in the game. Well, Watson and Rondo have had great second halves. Stockton waves Sims away. Sparks trying to come off a screen. Lofton right with him. Can't get it to him. Shot clock at 10. Well, the whistle stops it at 11 with a timeout, Kentucky. Three and a half left in the game. 10 seconds on the shot clock as Kentucky calls a timeout holding a one-point lead. And coming up this weekend, Alltel presents an SEC doubleheader. The last Saturday of the regular season finds Tennessee at Vanderbilt.
as the Volunteers, the SEC East champions, go on the road to face their in-state rival. And then the second game features LSU looking for the overall SEC regular season championship as they'll take on the Ole Miss Rebels. Check your local listings for the game in your area. It all starts at 2 o'clock Eastern time on most of these stations Saturday. Good matchup at Nashville in that first one. I'm also anxious to see whether Tyrus Thomas is healthy enough to come back and play this Saturday. Unable to play in the game that the Tigers won at Columbia last night. Kentucky 13 of 15 in the second half, 87% shooting. But their lead is only one. Randolph Morris back in, playing with four fouls and three and a half on the clock. Rondo still on the bench. Only 11 on the shot clock. Lob it in to Morris. Good pass by Crawford to get Morris. Wingate was fronting him, and Morris to the hoop for his 22nd point. I'll tell you what happened. Wingate went over to help a little bit that time on Sparks going to the corner, and when he did, it freed Morris inside. What a good pass by Crawford. Watson, Crawford trying to check him. He scored nine in a row. Morris with his season high, 24 points for Kentucky. And Crawford not happy with the foul. That's number three on Joe. Randolph Morris with a season high 24 points. Playing with four fouls. He got the latest for Kentucky. We're back after this from your local SEC station. The Alltel SEC Game of the Week has been brought to you by Alltel. By Chevrolet. By Advance Auto Parts. And by your local Toyota dealers. With our producer Roger Roebuck, director Gary Clem, Tom Hammond, and Larry Conley had a terrific game in Knoxville before over 24,000 as Kentucky leads Tennessee 78-75. Wildcats trailed by as many as 14 points. They were down 21-7 in the first half. They came out scorching in the second half with Morris and Rondo doing the damage. And with 3.06 left, they have a three-point lead. Morris takes a seat on the bench as Tubby Smith doing a little offensive defensive substitution no doubt you saw the leading scores there here's Bradshaw underneath fouled by Rondo Tom interesting that Stockton is in here in the crunch time with the final three minutes to go Stockton a little used for most of the season but has started the last five games he's played 16 games overall but started the last five He's been uh, earning more and more playing time, and as you said, here he is when the game is on the line. Tennessee now has hit five of eight at the free throw line. Kentucky is 13 of 18. Bradshaw will have one more. Bradshaw has five points. And here's the offensive defensive substitution. Morris comes back and sims to the bench. Good idea to have him in there on offense, even with those four fouls. Season high 24 for Moore. Second free throw, no good. Long rebound right to Sparks. He never even moved. It just came straight to him. It's like, look what I found. And Rondo walks it up with the ball up two. See if they clear out now. Patterson is guarding Morris. Stockton looks for Morris, but they're helping out, sagging down on defense. Watson sags off to help on Morris. That leaves Stockton open. Rondo says that's interchange. Sparks for three. No good. A bad looking shot by Sparks. But Tennessee unable to hold the rebound and Stockton chases it down. Well, that is a big grab right there by Brandon Stockton. Rondo, not a step. Puts it up high off the glass and good. 16 for Rondo. Top Tennessee just has not made the adjustment to stop Rondo. He has gone down that lane consistently in this second half. A dozen points in this half. Bradshaw at the point. Rondo has it. Under two minutes. Bradshaw drives to the basket. Morris playing with four. Made him alter the shot, but then everybody cleared up. And Bradshaw able to get the rebound and put it home. Nobody there to challenge him. Lob it, dangerous pass, deflected by Lofton, a steal by Tennessee. 
Seventh steal for the balls, and Watson has it. A minute and a half. Three-pointer rimmed out. Sparks battling for the rebound with Patterson. It'll go to Tennessee. Robbie Moss threw a terrible pass that time to Sparks. He couldn't get open, though. Give Tennessee credit with that full court pressure. They just will not allow you to come to the ball. 18 Kentucky turnovers. Stockton almost got that steal. Do they want to go inside to try to get Morris with his fifth foul? Watson drives by Moss. Rondo blocked it. And Robbie Moss has the rebound. What a defensive play by Rajon Rondo. Came from the left side. One minute left. Kentucky on the home court of the SEC East champions. Rondo penetrates, lost it. Here's Watson the other way. Stockton chasing him. And a foul called back at midcourt. It's on Rondo. Watch again. Rondo just lost the handle here. Looked up, and it was going the other way. Jawan Smith was taking off to the other end. I think that foul occurred about midcourt. And Rondo, I think Bruce Pearl's looking for an intentional yeah, foul. Rondo's lucky it wasn't called intentional because he had gone by Rondo. Tony Green saying, uh, Coach, have a seat. Let's take a look at it again. Now, watch Rondo reach out here. That, you could, know, that well, could easily have been called intentional. He was well past him. I'll tell you the other thing, I didn't think it was a very, uh, I don't want to say a belligerent foul, but I mean, he just kind of reached in and just touched him in the back. Free throw, no good. Jawan Smith, not a good free throw shooter, 58%, missed the front end, and Stockton has it for Kentucky. Rondo goes to the bench, 40 seconds left. And here's Brandon Stockton, little used most of the season. At the point for Kentucky, the game on the line, and Rondo on the bench. Crawford. A three-pointer by Crawford. No good. What was that shot? Tennessee now with a chance. Higher wins. Smith drives on Stockton. Lost it for a moment. Still a scramble. Bodies on the floor. Stockton has it. Got it to Crawford. Stockton made the steal, and Crawford is fouled. Brandon Stockton, the hero in the clutch, as he makes the steal and gets rid of the ball before Tennessee can tie him up. What a play by the little guard, the little used guard. Look at this. Ball's loose. Look at him dive. He comes up with it, gets it to Crawford, and Crawford is fouled going up the left sideline. What a play by Brandon Stockton. But you have to wonder about uh, Joe Crawford's shot selection. And you also have to wonder why Rajon Rondo is not on the floor. In any event, Stockton made the play, so hats off to him. In his senior season, Brandon Stockton has been a vital cog for the Wildcats tonight. Here's Crawford. Eight seconds or less. Missed the front end. Tapped up. No good. Bradshaw has it. Two-point game. We gotta get it up. Here's Watson. Launches a three. It's no good at the buzzer. And Kentucky has won 80 to 78. And Tubby Smith with a chest bump for Brandon Stockton. And why not? The biggest play of the night was a defensive play by Brandon Stockton. Tom, one of the best games I have witnessed all year long. That was fun. Our Red Lobster nothing but net shot of the game. Rajon Rondo unstoppable in the second half. This was the basket that put Kentucky in front to stay. Nice move down the right side and again high off the glass. A patented Rondo shot. He had 16 points, 12 of them in the second half. As Kentucky in the second half hit 15 of 19 shots, 79%.
Rajon Rondo, Randolph Morris, and Brandon Stockton, the heroes of the day for the Wildcats, who overcame a 14-point first-half deficit to win a game they had to win for a possible SEC tournament by, and of course, to try to make it into the SEC tournament. And so now win. LSU is the SEC champion. So the Tigers claim the SEC regular season championship. Tennessee will go to Vanderbilt on Saturday. Kentucky returns home Sunday to host Florida in a battle for second place place in the SEC East. It was a good one. Hope you enjoyed it. Tom Hammond for Larry Conley saying so long from Knoxville. Randolph Morris who had 22 and 9. Yeah, Kentucky at the beginning of the game didn't play any defense. Second half, they really lit it up from off from the offensive end. Didn't score nine of nine from the field. <laughs> and nine of nine from two-point country. They didn't miss a two-point basket in the entire second half. Shot 79% in the half. CJ Watson for three and the win. No go. And oh, Tubby's pumped. Wildcats yeah, on going to the, the tournament. Track. <laughs> yeah, no, no kidding. Two-point win. <laughs> UK comes away with a much needed win, knocking off the number 11 team in the nation. Made for a stress-free evening for Governor Fletcher after he left the hospital today, or any other True Blue fan for that matter. But what a night for the Cats, just when they needed a huge win. Ryan Lemon is in the newsroom. Well, you know, just more. when True Blue fans are, are starting to doubt this year's Kentucky basketball team, the Cats, you know, seem to do something to get that optimism back in high gear. It happened again tonight down in Knoxville. A rare sellout at Thompson Bowling Arena. Saw the volunteers jump up on the Cats by seven at the half. Second half, Cats came out and shot the lights out. Bobby Perry that three, and then Randolph Moore steps into passing lane, gets the steal the other way. Ravi Moss for the three, and just like that, it's a one-point ball game. Moore from the outside. Brandon Stockton, the three-pointer from the corner. Puts Kentucky in the leaves. Their first lead since the opening minutes at 52 to 50. Chris Lofton, the former Kentucky Mr. Basketball, breaks the Tennessee single season three point record with that one right there. But it wasn't going to be enough. Randolph Morris, a huge game, 20 points. Kentucky wins at 80 to 78. We'll have more highlights and Alan Cutler's a post game recap from Knoxville coming up a little bit later in LEX 18 Sports. All right, Ryan, thanks. The Wildcats have a chance for some revenge tonight on the Vols' home court. And good evening, a crucial game tonight as the Cats fight for a spot in the NCAA tournament. After losing to Tennessee at Rupp three weeks ago, the Wildcats went into Knoxville tonight looking to upset the Orange faithful. Rob Bromley is first at 11 with a game that went down to the final seconds. Well, what a ball game as the Cats rallied tonight in front of a hostile crowd down at Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville. Down seven at halftime, they come out firing. Bobby Perry a three. That was followed by another three here from Ravi Moss. And when Brandon Stockton nailed this one, the Cats had a lead, 52-50. Rajon Rondo was tremendous. Look at this drive. Kentucky by six. Chris Lofton answered at the other end. It turned into a shootout. Rondo scored 10 straight. Cats up by three. It was a big night for C.J. Watson. He kept Tennessee in it. Randolph Morris, big plays down the stretch. He finished with 24 points on the lob. Now, Rondo giving Kentucky a four-point lead, 80-76. We go to the closing seconds. Tennessee down two with the ball. Brandon Stockton knocks it away, gets it to Joe Crawford, and Crawford's fouled. Seconds to go. Crawford misses at the free throw line. Tennessee a chance to pull it out right at the way. Right at the end, and C.J. Watson can't connect. The Cats come away with a tremendous victory tonight in Knoxville, 80 to 78. And what that means is, with a victory over Florida this weekend on Sunday afternoon, they can get that number two seed in the East and not play on Thursday. They wouldn't have to play until Friday. All right, Rob, thank you. We have more on this. People who live on the Kentucky-Tennessee border say there's a lot to like in both states, except when it comes to college sports. Phil Pendleton reports on the border war between the Cats and the Vols tonight and what fans who live on that border think. When Tennessee won back Kenny Moose Birchfield is a diehard Tennessee fan, yet he only lives 50 yards from Kentucky. Most of his business comes from Kentuckians, but his loyalties lie strictly with the Big Orange. It used to be we had to let our women handle the, uh, I call it the non-contact sport to beat the Kentucky all the time, but now that we've got a basketball team down here, it's great. Moose admits he makes the short trip into Kentucky often to shop. Roger Owens of McCreary County travels down to Tennessee for the same reasons, but you'll never find him buying anything orange there. Ever since I was 
that tall, I'd say for over 50 years. I've been a UK fan. Well, some UT fans who live here on the border love going into Kentucky. And then on the flip side, some of the UK fans who live in Kentucky love going down into Tennessee, but none are willing to switch their team loyalties. Birchfield has a friendly wager going with a nearby Kentucky business owner. If Kentucky wins, he'll wear blue for a week. But if Tennessee wins, his friend up north has to wear Tennessee orange. Fans on both sides are predicting wins tonight. This is do or die for Kentucky. If Tennessee loses, it's not going to hurt them. Tennessee has lost to Kentucky by 60 points before. That'd be great to see them beat them by 61. This has a little revenge factor. Phil Pendleton, 27 News First. Well, that didn't exactly happen. UK won tonight. It looks like Mr. Birchfield will be spending a week wearing Kentucky blue. That's in this one. He completed eight of his nine field goal attempts, down seven at the break. The Cats rallied with a little R and R. Rajon Rondo, 16 points, eight assists. Kentucky went from shooting 48% in the first to 60% in the second. Here's how. Rondo to Morris. Morris finished with 22 points, but here's the play of the game. Brandon Stockton with a little defense after the Jawan Smith fumble. Stockton leaping to the ground, pulling in the loose goose. Joe Crawford would miss the free throws, but Tubby says that's all right because the Wildcats win it 82-78. Great night from Morris, 22 points. Rajon Rondo, Rondo added 16. Chris Lofton, the Kentucky native that now plays for the Tennessee Vols, well, he finished with 15. Other scores of interest, Louisville winning to a big night for the Cats, a big win, but boy, they took it right down to the wire for us. Everybody chipped in, and it was a big game. It was the biggest win of the season. What an atmosphere as the Cats went into Knoxville to take on Tennessee tonight. A checkerboard pattern created by T-shirts at Thompson Bowling Arena, and the Vols came busting out of the gate. They run off 15 unanswered points to go up early, 21-7. Now, Randolph Morris responded to the Cats. It seemed like he was dunking everything for a while. The follow there. And with this dunk, the Cats had scored eight in a row to shave the lead to six, but Morris had to go out of the game with two fouls. What a flurry near the end of the half. Andre Patterson with a follow slam, and then moments later, the Vols steal it. Chris Lofton with a three, Tennessee back up by 12, Lofton with 15. But the Cats cut the lead before the half. Patrick Sparks a three-pointer, the lead down to seven at the break. And then at the start of the second half, Kentucky on fire. A three by Brandon Stockton puts the Cats in front, 52-50. Look at the bench. And then a flurry of baskets. Rajon Rondo, the reverse layup, a five-point Wildcat lead. Lofton a three for Tennessee at the other end to cut the lead back to two. But Rondo scored 10 straight. The drive and the short jumper here catch up by three. And what a game for Randolph Morris. On the lob from Rondo, it was 73-69. Coming out of a timeout, Crawford goes to Morris with three and a half left, 78-75, 24 for Morris. Now, final minute, Tennessee down two, loses control. Stockton gets in there, gets it to Joe Crawford. And Crawford racing down the left side is fouled. He goes to the line trying to make it a three-point game. Misses. C.J. Watson comes down. He'd had a big night and trying to win it for the balls right at the end. But it is off the mark, and the Cats win an absolute thriller. Tonight in Knoxville, the chest bump there with Brandon Stockton and the Wildcats thankful for a must win. Tennessee is a worthy you know, Eastern Division champion, and to come in their home and, and win is is um, was important to us because we knew we were fighting for a lot of things as we go down the stretch here. Give us a lot of confidence. So we got to you know build from this. You know we did a lot of things wrong in this game, so we got to look at the film. You know we can't be too happy about the way we played. You know, but you know, we can celebrate a little bit. But now it's time to you know focus on Florida. You know I try to play defense every game as hard as I can, and it just so happened this game that he put me on him, and you know. He said, shut him down as much as you can. And, you know, I took pride in that. And, and I, you know, I tried to try the best I could. It means a lot. I mean, we've been in some close games this year. And, uh, you know, we wound up on the losing end of some of them. So to close one out this close, it was, means a lot to us.